Um, okay, I will start now. Um, good day, um, everyone. My name is Anna, and I am um, from Vedapal's team. Today, I am to um, introduce um, Dr. Pratap Chauhan to everyone to give um, a webinar on Ayurveda for a healthy lifestyle. Um, Dr. Chauhan is Indian Ayurvedic doctor, founder of Jiva Ayurveda and member of the advisory committee, Ministry of Health, Government of India. And he has a lot more other credentials. Um, if any questions, after the web, uh, have some time to ask them. What you see here now, uh, Dr. Chauhan, please start. Okay, so namaste everybody from India. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Pratap Chauhan. I am the Ayurvedic direct, uh, doctor and uh, director of Jiva Ayurveda. I am very happy to share with you today some basic uh, principles of Ayurveda that will help you to become healthy and happy. In fact, Ayurveda has become quite popular in the last, uh, last few years and uh, more and more people are trying to explore how they can use this ancient knowledge from India to become healthy and happy. In fact, in the modern age, in this world now, we are in a very interesting situation. People are starting to realize that the cause of their diseases is not just in the physical body or the, the solution to the problems is not just suppressing the symptoms. For example, if you have high blood pressure, so just taking a tablet that will maintain your blood pressure in a normal level is not uh, the solution. People are realizing this. Or if you have high cholesterol, uh, just taking a tablet that will balance the cholesterol level is not sufficient. Or if you have diabetes or if you have pain in the joints or if you have you know, migraine, so just having a painkiller is not going to solve your problem. Of course, you can feel better you can uh, feel relieved from the symptoms ayurveda has a very interesting approach in ayurveda we are always trying to find out what is the root cause of the problem that means if you have high blood pressure so we try to find out what is the cause of the high blood pressure or if you have you know some pain in your joints so what is the cause of the pain and we try to treat the root cause of the problem. This is specifically a very important principle of Ayurveda. That is why in Ayurveda, we can uh, definitely try to also treat permanently or we can try to cure the disease. If I use the word cure, uh, which is sometimes considered a very heavy word, but of course in Ayurveda, that is our aim, our goal. In addition to treating the diseases, Ayurveda also aims to maintain the health of people who are healthy. So therefore, there are many things in Ayurveda. Yeah, there are many things in Ayurveda which are also helping the people who are not sick. That means healthy people. And is to maintain health and the goal is to prevent diseases. Another goal of Ayurveda is to maintain youth and life. We have seen that there is an increase in the lifespan of people in different countries, but the quality of life is not good. I have seen people who are living but they are living on tablets. They are taking 10 tablets or 15 tablets per day and their lifespan has increased because they are on tablets. Anyway, our subject today is not uh, what, what is going on in the modern medical system, but our subject is that how can we 
we apply the iron principles in our daily life so that we can be healthy and happy so first of all i would like to define the word ayurveda which is often uh, translated as the science of life but let me give you a little bit, bit more deeper this word ayurveda is a sanskrit word which comprises of two words veda which means knowledge and ayur which means a combination of four things it's a combination of body mind senses and soul so therefore in brief ayurveda is a knowledge about body senses mind and soul in another in another words if i want to just explain it or elaborate this i am saying that ayurveda is a knowledge about the human system so this human being which has a body which also has senses we have eyes nose tongue ears and the skin which are called the uh, knowledge acquiring senses we all have a mind and we all have a soul which is the energy which keeps this whole system alive so human beings all over the world are comprising of these four things body senses mind and soul of course when we elaborate the mind we could further elaborate into uh, more subtle things like the subconscious mind or the intellect or the intelligence ego this is also part of the mind we are not going to go into details today because our subject is very very introductory but i want to uh, get you interested in ayurveda i want you to understand the basis of ayurveda and not just uh, thinking that ayurveda is a knowledge from india which talks about uh, different types of bodies like vata pitta kapha because this has become very popular all over the world everybody is using these terms of course if you have a little interest in ayurveda maybe you also have heard about these words vata pitta and kapha and often we also try to you know differentiate different people into these types like we say this is vata type or this is pitta type person this is referring to their physical constitution but ayurveda actually is a very very interesting subject it is a knowledge about this human being in simple word i would say this is an instruction manual for this human being when you buy something from the market if you buy a product you buy a mobile phone you buy buy some camera or you buy any gadget so there is a booklet with this which and describes about how it functions and if something goes wrong how to fix it a little bit of introduction about the product so ayurveda is such a booklet which actually explains about this human system in very nice details very nice details means we can understand it we can apply it we can practice it and we can also you know uh, help ourselves fixing the things in for example if you have cold you have cold sneezing or you have a sore throat so ayurveda will explain you why you have a cold why you have a sore throat what causes this and how you can remove the cause and how you can solve this problem so it's very simple it's not a very complicated uh, law or it's not a very complicated principle principles are very simple once we we will go into the subject we can try to understand but basically ayurveda is a knowledge about the human beings uh, in simple words today if you see people are suffering at different levels people are having physical diseases people are also suffering at mental level this is because we don't know much about it. in our schools in our colleges in our higher education programs nobody teaches us about this human system nobody teaches about what is mind what are emotions where are emotions located what is emotional trauma what is a childhood bad experience where is it located in the body how does it affects my system we are never taught about this all we learn in the schools and the colleges is to understand some knowledge which will help us to get a job so that we can make money which is also necessary is fine but in addition to money we need more information to live here in order to live healthy in order to live happy we need to understand 
various components of this human system otherwise we will never become happy we will never become healthy if we don't understand this system it's like if you have a car and you don't know anything about this car you don't know how to drive the car you also don't know how to you know you know operate different things where is the accelerator how to change the gears you don't know what kind of fuel to be uh, put in the car you don't know the traffic rules and you drive this car every day so what is going to happen this will create a big trouble you will have many accidents so today if you see nobody wants to get sick nobody wants to be unhappy but we are all getting accidents even suddenly one day you find out that you have high cholesterol one day you find out you have high blood pressure one day you find out that you have uh, high blood sugar level these are accidents because we don't understand this system fully and we don't know how to drive this car so in simple words ayurveda is a very very, very useful for every human being if you are a human being it doesn't matter where you belong whether you are from russia from america from europe from japan from australia anywhere human beings are same all over the world wherever you go you will find same human beings i have traveled to about 50 countries in the world i have not seen different types of human beings in every country i have never seen people with two heads four legs four kidneys or two hearts no everywhere wherever i go people have same construction or same composition therefore whatever knowledge is described in ayurveda which was of course developed in india but the knowledge is about human beings and human beings are everywhere in the world so the knowledge also applies to these human beings or in another words we can say this knowledge is applicable to the human system so uh, if we want to be healthy if you want to be happy it is very very important for everybody each one of us should have some basic understanding about ayurveda otherwise i don't uh, feel uh, or i don't think really that we can be healthy or happy and we have seen this even a small problem like high cholesterol we can't fix it we have to take start taking a tablet and we have to take it for the rest of your life because we are not looking into the root cause what causes this high cholesterol in my body is it something with my digestive system or is it something with my food is it something with my stress or is it something something else which is causing this problem as long as i don't uh, find the cause i cannot solve the problem permanently so that is the basic definition of ayurveda uh, yeah, if i just repeat it again ayurveda is made up of two words Veda means knowledge, Ayur means a combination of body, senses, mind and soul. So in a brief, it is a knowledge about this human system. It's knowledge about human beings. Everything is very nicely described. What is the body made up of? How does the body functions? What is a healthy body? What is unhealthy body? What is a disease? How do we treat the disease? What is mind? Where is the mind located? How does the mind functions? What are uh, the definitions of healthy mind and unhealthy mind? What is subconscious mind? Where do we store our negative experiences? Where do we store our emotional tra traumas? How can we uh, deal with these traumas? How can we try to neutralize our bad experiences? How can we enhance uh, goodness in the subconscious mind how can we have that feeling of you know uh, happiness all this is very nicely explained not only this they also explain about soul what is soul where is the soul located what is the function of soul what is the qualities of soul because most people when they hear the word soul they think it is some religion no it's a part of the human system the energy which keeps this system alive is soul don't think beyond this we are just talking about very very basic things so when we talk of soul i am not talking about some religion i am just mentioning to the energy which keeps this human system alive and we have to understand that energy also if i don't understand that energy 
then I am having an incomplete information about this human system because all these different components of the human being they work together they work with each other they are all coordinating even at the physical level if you see there are different organs there are different tissues there are different types of cells in the body and all of them they work in a great coordination they, they work uh, in a great cooperation with each other many times if you will study the physical body you will realize that if some part is needing some help the other part rushes there or other you know things they go and they try to help it out even in this in the crisis so this is it's a very nice design actually and the more I study about this design, the more fascinated. It's very interesting and every person should understand it. Every person should be taught about it, even right from early age. Because if we don't know the information about the system, how to use it, we start abusing it actually, or we start misusing it. Because we don't and in the heavily you know bound with commercials with all the different kind of media advertisements so we are in a state of confusion actually because we don't understand this human system and then the advertisements and the commercials they are constantly you know forcing us to buy this thing or use this thing or eat that thing so without knowing the system without uh, understanding whether I need this thing whether I need this food whether I need this product I just use them and that is also a very big cause of this disturbance and very big cause of diseases talking about a physical body if I just want to explain you at physical level if we want to understand how does the physical body works it's a very simple principle Ayurveda explains that physical body is comprising of five elements you might have heard this uh, sentence earlier also or if you study some of these so-called uh, alternative medicines or so-called Eastern sciences uh, such principles are very prominent and very popular in this part of the um, you know philosophy or this part of the Eastern Eastern philosophy or Eastern medicine as they call it now so five elements uh, what does it mean how do I understand it this is very very important I understand it that the physical body has five different types of components which are called as earth water fire air and space sounds a little bit uh, confusing because it looks like maybe mud in the body or there's a lake of water in the body or some air is blowing there is a fire inside no these are metaphoric words which actually uh, uh, you know they, they just uh, uh, denote or they just are indicating that there is a solid part in the body of course we have solid parts in our body which are the earth element then there are fluids in the body there are liquids in the body which are called the water element just a very simple uh, way I am trying to explain it that there are some parts of the body which are responsible for uh, digestion for metabolism or for maintaining the temperature of this body the body maintains a particular temperature and that is the fire element then we can see different movements in the body things are moving you know the food is moving in the digestive tract the blood is moving in the circulatory system the nerve impulses are moving so the moving force in the body is the air element and there are empty spaces also in the body inside the ear inside the lungs inside the large intestine there are empty spaces which are also uh, playing an important role in the normal functioning of this body which means if there was no empty space maybe it will be vacuum and vacuum uh, will not be able to facilitate the movement of various things in the body so the space is also considered to be a component of this physical body now very simple i think uh, maybe you were expecting i'm going to talk about something very difficult but no as i said ayurveda is very very simple and it's very easy to understand it is also very easy to apply if you will uh, understand a few basic principles you can apply 
this knowledge in your daily routine life in your everyday life to at least understand your problems and also to fix some of the common problems that we face in our daily life so uh, first i started with body and then i will move on to the other components of the human system uh, as i said body is made up of five elements now i think i explained it a little bit and you understand what does it mean and why do i need to know this you know what's the point this is uh, an important thing that uh, i would like to explain uh, first of all it helps me to understand my own body my own structure my own components in the physical body and this actually helps me to know many things it's not just understanding the physical body but also once i know what i am composed of that will also indicate my characters my different uh, you know um, habits or different attributes what different attributes uh, this physical body has you might have seen that although we are all made up of uh, these five elements but still when you look at people they are different from each other some people are very big chubby they have a big body some people are very skinny even though they eat a lot of food sometimes they eat six times a day and still don't gain any weight there are people who are trying very hard to lose weight but they don't lose weight even if they drink water they gain weight sometimes actually so this is different types of body we have to understand what is that underlying principle how do i explain this that one person is chubby another person is skinny both are made up of five elements both have earth water fire air and space so why this difference so this is the first principle that uh, ayurveda explains through this theory of five elements ayurveda says that each one of us has a different ratio of these five elements we are born with a different ratio of these five elements that means some people are naturally born with a lot of earth so they have little bit chubby body some people are born with lot of fire dominant fire the fire element is dominant they are generally you know you will see that they are also fiery in nature as compared to people who have lot of earth they are more sedentary they are more stable they are more earthly in their nature and there are people who are dominant in the air element so the first application of this theory is that this helps me to understand my physical constitution which element is dominant in my body and why i should know this because if i know my constitution if i know what is the dominant element in me then i can choose my food my lifestyle my sports my other activities according to my nature the definition of health in ayurveda is balance in a simple way whenever we are in the state of balance we are healthy for example if i maintain the original ratio of the five elements in my body i am healthy it doesn't matter if you are little bit chubby because you're born little bit chubby it doesn't matter that you're very skinny and you have very um, you know low muscles or low fat in your body because you are born with dominant air element in your body so this is not a disease your physical constitution which in ayurveda is called prakriti is not a disease this is just your ratio their combination of different elements and the ratio of different elements in your physical body you must know it it is very important it's like knowing what kind of car you have whether you are, you have a diesel car or you have a petrol car it is very very important to know this if you don't know that you might put a wrong fuel in the car and that's not going to 
be very good for the car. The engine will not function properly if you put diesel in a petrol car or you put petrol in a diesel car. This is going to have some kind of trouble in the engine not function properly. So this is one reason why people are not healthy in the body because majority of us do not have understanding about our physical constitution. Suppose a person with a lot of fire, dominant fire, drinks coffee every day in the morning, maybe two coffees. He also eats some hot spicy food, chilies. Again, coffee is heating, spices are heating, chili is heating. He also likes to drink some alcohol regularly. That's also heating. Maybe this person also smokes. That's also heating. So what is he doing? He is already dominant in fire. And he is still eating foods which are fiery in nature, heating in nature. So what this will do? This will in the fire element in the body. As a result, the person will develop some disease because you are getting out of balance. So you might have itching or burning, burning in the eyes, burning in the urine or maybe you also have some other uh, heat related diseases, fire related diseases, could be hair loss for example. You become bald at a very early age because too much fire in the head, it burns the nutrition of the hair and the hair fall or hair become gray at a very young age. These are all the uh, outcome of too much fire in the body. And you don't understand. Suppose you have heartburn because you are eating the wrong food. You are eating something which is not compatible with your constitution. And you so you enter a tablet that will neutralize the acid. But you don't stop drinking your coffee. You don't stop drinking your water. Wine, don't stop smoking, you don't stop eating your chilies. So that's not going to solve your problem. In fact, uh, this is not considered very intelligent. According to Ayurveda, this is called misuse of intelligence. The word is Pragya Paradha in Sanskrit. Pragya Paradha is to be Because our self-development is burning for years, for 10 years, for 15 years. Sometimes I find people suffering from a chronic skin disease. And when I ask them what they're eating, number one coffee in the morning, they're eating spicy food, they don't use their intelligence. It's common sense. But we don't use it because nobody has educated us. Nobody has taught us to analyze the diseases in this way. We think that just taking some anti-allergic tablet or just taking some antacid, I am solving my problem because I am I am not feeling the symptoms. I am not feeling the symptoms temporarily. That's why I have to take a tablet every day. It's not being cured. The disease is still there. I am just suppressing or I am just neutralizing the acid by taking an antacid. But until and unless I stop the cause, I stop putting acidity or acid food, acidic food into my stomach, I will not be cured. So this is how Ayurveda, uh, this principle of five elements helps us in number one application is that I should know my constitution. I should know which element is dominant in my body because then I can choose a proper food and maintain my constitution, maintain my balance. If I maintain the balance, then this is called health. And this is also one of the goals of Ayurveda. This is one of the aims of Ayurveda that everybody should try to understand their physical nature, their body type, and they should try to maintain it.
which means try to prevent diseases i should not have diseases diseases will come when i lose my balance when i become imbalanced too much fire for example or too much earth if the earth element increases and it's not necessary that people who are dominant in fire will increase fire no a, a person who is dominant in air element a person who is dominant in the earth element can also increase fire element if he or she is eating all these foods which i just mentioned or even mentally if i am feeling very angry if i am jealous if i am you know very proud you know egoistic this also increases heat in the body whenever you feel angry the body becomes hot so not only physically but also mentally so this is the basic uh, application that we should try to prevent diseases and it's not very complicated once you know your type once you know what kind of car you have then you put the right fuel you run the uh, on the right speed you don't overrun the car or you you maintain it properly timely you clean it all these things are the by products of knowing your physical constitution suppose a person is having too much earth element in the constitution that means the body is chubby body has a tendency to gain weight body has a tendency to be more stable more you know sluggish because earth is very solid heavy so that's why people who are dominant in the earth element you will see them by nature also they are very stable they are very heavy they are sedentary they don't like to move they don't want to exercise if you tell them to exercise they will always always postpone it they're a little bit lazy little bit uh, slow i would say that they don't want to really move so if you don't know that if you don't know that that's a part of your nature so you will actually become more slow and slug sluggish but if you know that i am a earth dominant person i have a tendency to be slow and lazy and sedentary and stable and a little bit you know um, sedentary so then you will create a daily routine for example you will not i'm not talking only about foods foods of course you will avoid foods which are heavy in nature which will increase more earth element like for example cheese for example meat for example uh, fried foods sweets milk products all these are heavy things so anything which is very heavy solid stable similar qualities will increase the earth element in the body like increases and opposite decreases this is the principle of ayurveda you must remember this principle so if and not only food even the lifestyle if in my lifestyle i am sedentary i am stable i am always lying down sleeping so this will also increase the earth element so that means i must not only just look into the food but also i have to move i have to do some jogging i have to do some physical exercise so that i don't become very sedentary i don't become very heavy so this is how we balance we balance by doing things which are opposite to the quality of that particular element but don't overdo the opposite also you have to just learn this art of maintaining the balance sometimes i have seen people that they do an ayurvedic constitution test they find out that they have lot of fire in their prakriti in their constitution immediately very fanatically they will stop all the heating foods and start taking only cooling things this is not necessarily required because i told you the first application is to maintain it you don't have to start doing the opposite if you don't have the need to do it as long as you are balanced as long as you are healthy you just maintain it of course you will have to watch that means if you are fire dominant person you are not going to do or overdo i will say you are not going to overeat the fiery foods and if you do at all try to do something opposite take some 
cucumbers eat some watermelon drink lot of water so that you can balance it immediately in just in a in a day or two days you can sit that's the art of healthy living that is the way of ayurvedic living this is the ayurvedic lifestyle that if you think that you have made a mistake or you have eaten something which is you are not supposed to then you must immediately try to counter it to balance it because you need to maintain the balance so this is the first application the second application of this five uh, theory or this uh, theory that the body is made up of five elements is this also helps us to understand what is the disease because the disease is the imbalanced state of these five elements as i mentioned if somebody has itching burning eczema psoriasis hyperacidity so immediately you have to first of all think and ask a question what has increased what is causing this and when you know that my body has five elements so you can imagine oh yes this is the fire element fire element has increased now what to do the principle is like increases opposite decreases so you have to stop the like means the similar stop the things which are similar to fire heating in nature burning high temperature creating heat acidic all those properties of the fire stop the similar take the opposite what is opposite to fire yes what is opposite to fire water water is opposite drink water drink uh, you know watermelon juice coconut water lettuce anything which is watery anything which is cooling will be good for you so that is how you balance it's very interesting if the disease is not very old if you have encountered a disease just recently and it's not very chronic you can just manage it by doing this type of activity which means stop the similar take the opposite for example one morning you wake up with some blocked nose you find some mucus in your nose there is also congestion in the throat and maybe a little bit of chest congestion and you feeling little bit uh, difficulty in breathing or you are sneezing so now the first question is what has increased in terms of the five elements which element has increased of course if you will uh, understand little bit it's very clear the earth element mixed with water you can see the earth and water together have increased that's why sticky mucus means some earth and water mixed together so now what to do simple principle is the same like increases opposite decreases what will you do you will stop things which are similar in nature sticky like cheese yogurt anything which is oily greasy deep fried sweets heavy sweets are also sticky because they are sugary so such thing cold because the mucus earth and water are cold in nature so anything cold refrigerated ice cream for example this you will stop take the opposite what is opposite to water opposite to water is fire so you take ginger that's why ginger tea is so popular whenever you have cold you would like to have a ginger tea or you can eat, even have ginger powder mixed with some honey or many times you might have seen that we just drink warm water or we don't eat anything also because when we are fasting then this is always in heat in the body when you fast the heat increases and we have different kind of fires in the body and they become strong when we are not eating because when we eat we put food on this fire we put you know something solid so they become low if we don't eat they become strong so this is the basic uh, principle that whenever you have any disease any disorder 
if it is still very new just a few days or a week old you can try to first of all understand which element has increased you can then apply the principle like increases which means top the similar take the opposite very very effective simple no need to go to like uh, some kind of chemical procedures or take some chemicals to suppress the symptoms but of course this part maybe is not uh, uh, so easy because sometimes you don't understand which element is increased so for that purpose you can always consult with an ayurvedic physician or if your disease is complicated if your disease is very old if you think that you are not able to figure out which element has increased then we have in ayurveda what we call ayurvedic physicians or ayurvedic doctors like in jiva we have even started a very nice practice now where people from anywhere in the world can also consult for their diseases by email you can actually go to our website www.jiva.com and you will find a consultation form where you fill out your details about your problem and different questions that we have put in that form and this form can be sent to us by email you just submit it and it will reach us so when it comes to us our doctors will analyze what element has increased or what's wrong with you we send you a reply and we suggest you foods lifestyles we have been helping people through this internet for more than 20 years now all over the world in more more than 100 countries amazing results people who were suffering for long and they were not able to get some proper cure to their disease permanently they have been cured principle is simple you have to understand and apply of course with practice more and more practice you will understand it better but it's very easy i hope you all understand what i'm talking about so this is the second application in uh, india we have also set up uh, a telemedicine center now because in india people don't use much internet especially people who been living in the rural india so they can also consult with our doctors through phone if you have any problem you can uh, just talk to the our doctors and this is uh, our telemedicine center and i have created the world's largest ayurvedic telemedicine center in india we have about 150 ayurvedic doctors and every day we process more than 6000 patients many people are calling and our doctors are helping them and i have also launched a tv program here in india which is very popular every day i am on different channels of television and i am teaching people about simple things how they can understand their diseases how they can help themselves how they can you know have proper diets lifestyles some kind of exercises this is very very important this knowledge of ayurveda is now required all over the world i'm just talking about the body and you must be like uh, understanding it i think i'm sure and you're maybe getting very interested in this wait till i talk about the mind and the soul it's amazing knowledge very nice because more and more people today in the world they're actually suffering in the mind so how to deal with the mind this also is described of course i am just giving you the basics i'm not going to go into details because we have very limited time short time but i'm just trying to explain that it is very very important for all of us to understand the ayurvedic principles at the level of the mind simple again very nicely explained it has been very nicely explained first of all many of us maybe we don't even know what is mind where is the mind located especially when you uh, read the modern uh, science we think mind is some bunch of chemicals in the brain which is increasing and decreasing and that's why when people come to us with mental disorders we're just trying to balance the chemicals in the brain but we all understand that this is not the brain mind is something beyond the brain 
of course it works through brain so uh, again just a brief uh, basic principle i will explain ayurveda says that if we talk about the operation of mind mind operates through three different qualities there is a quality of mind or a state of mind which is called a relaxed state of mind whenever this quality of mind which relaxes the mind is dominant the mind is quiet calm relaxed and this is called healthy mind and happy mind next time whenever you are happy if you just look at what makes you happy so you will realize ultimately it is the calm and relaxed state of mind which makes you happy in another words when your mind has no desire or suppose you had a desire and that desire got just fulfilled so you feel very happy why not because of that object that you have achieved or that thing that you have got but because your mind is now calm and quiet and there is no desire so we also advise people that try to avoid too much stimulation sounds like boring some people say what is life without stimulation but you have seen that more and more stimulation now is causing more and more disturbance more the mind is disturbed more the mind is stimulated more the mind is agitated it becomes more unhappy because it will not be able to rest you can't sleep so many people have problem with sleeping because they can't stop their mind they cannot relax their mind that's why meditation has become so popular now yoga has become so popular because yoga meditation these simple techniques like breathing techniques pranayama they help us to and the mind is when the mind is calm we feel happy it's simple so the first state of mind which is called healthy mind is the calm and quiet state of mind there is a particular quality that operates in our mind which is called sattva so whenever sattva is dominant in the mind the mind becomes calm and quiet similarly there is another quality of mind which is responsible for disturbing the mind which is responsible for agitating the mind this is not called the healthy state of mind and whenever your mind is agitated of course you can't be happy although many people think that when i am in that stimulation stage i am very happy it's not true when you are quiet and calm and if you think about it if you think about about the activity that you do to agitate your mind you will realize that it's not really right so many people today they are actually becoming uh, trying to become happy by creating agitation stimulation disturbance in the mind which is actually not happiness happiness always will be the calm and quiet state of mind whenever you are happy next time just see why you were happy because something some desire has been fulfilled even if it's a desire to go to a movie for example or it's a desire to go to a dancing party it's because your desire is fulfilled that time so you are happy but now you are busy disturbing your mind by the music and dancing so that will create further uh, you know uh, agitation and that will create unhappiness ultimately anyway so just explaining you basics and there is a third state of mind or which is governed by another quality of mind the second one is called the rajas the first is the sattva and the third quality which is called the tamas it actually is responsible for making the mind inert it makes the mind dull and kind of dark covered so the mind cannot see things clearly the mind cannot think clearly sometimes we encounter such a situation of mind that we are unable to think unable to see anything we are in kind of a confused state of mind so this tamas creates confusion rajas creates action when rajas is dominant it will create agitation the mind will do some action it wants some action so this agitation which leads to action and the inert mind or the dark mind or the dull mind which leads to confusion both are unhealthy state of mind in the world today we find many many people who are in this state of mind they have agitated mind and they are confused they have no clarity every time they want to become happy they will do something which will actually make them more unhappy 
we have many such examples in the world today so this is not good that's why many 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 people today they feel very happy if they calm down if they lie down if they do some yoga postures if they do some medicine meditation they feel very happy and i have seen many people who come and tell me why oh, i'm doing this program which is relaxing the mind i feel so happy that's why when we go to the forest when we go to the sea when we go to any peaceful place when we listen to some music which relaxes my mind when i smell some aroma which relaxes my mind when i you know do anything when i watch something which relaxes my mind when i play with the little child which relaxes my mind i feel very happy so the secret of happiness is a relaxed calm quiet mind so this is uh, just relating to the mind also i wanted to just give you now we are not going to go into details but i am introducing the subject of ayurveda to you and then finally very very important is that we have to understand the real me i am not this body i am also not the mind i am the soul and i also need to eat i also need some food many people i have seen they are very healthy in the body the mind is also very happy family is good the finances are good relations are good but they feel empty because they themselves as souls are not receiving any charge they are not being energized the soul also needs food and the food for soul is love so when we have love in our life which means true love unconditional love love which is eternal love which means giving without expectation i want to give i want to make somebody happy but i don't want something back this is the real definition of love this is the food for soul and that's why you might have heard that people talking about truthfulness non violence helping others forgiving others you know staying positive doing something creative this is all you know the food for soul because all these things we don't expect we just want to give we just want to help we just want to you know be non violent truthful these are the things that make our soul happy that means these are the things that make me happy so and i also say that if you want to be healthy and happy you must slowly develop this so called spiritual temperament spiritual the word spiritual again you know some ring some bells in it don't don't think i'm going to talk about some religion here spiritual means that subject or that object which relates to my spirit my soul and this makes my soul happy so any activity that will be making the soul uh, feel good or contented or satisfied is called spiritual like anything that uh, that my mind that relates to my mind is called psychological anything that relates to my physical body is called physical so this is briefly an introduction to ayurveda ayurveda as i said is a knowledge about this human system i hope uh, i just introduce you to this subject and uh, uh, this is a wonderful knowledge has lot of uh, different uh, subjects branches where we understand each and every part of the human system but uh, just this lecture was a very very introductory and as we can very clearly understand that if you want to be healthy and health does not mean only absten abstinence from physical symptoms health also means happy mind happy senses happy soul according to ayurveda so if you want to be healthy it is possible through ayurveda very much possible through ayurveda and i think it's only possible through ayurveda because there is no other science there is no other knowledge system i have seen in the world which talks so nicely so deeply about each and every component of this human system and it's not complicated it is very very simple the principles are very easy to understand they are applicable to every human being in any part of the world and they are very very effective so thank you very much for your time i just uh, gave a introduction to you of what is ayurveda and how ayurveda can make us healthy and happy at each and every level 
if you have any questions uh, you are welcome you can ask me Dear all, uh, Dr. Chao Han has uh, some time, maybe 10 minutes or so, to answer your questions. So if anyone of you would like to ask him a question, you can type it in chat and he will be able to answer. So any questions? If no questions, okay, there is a question, I think. Mm -hmm. There is a How question does from Mars. Ayurveda use Rosacea? This is a skin disease, right? So, when it comes to disease, uh, Ayurveda actually tries to understand, as I mentioned in the physical body, first of all, which element has gone out of balance, whether it is fire or air or earth. Or in Ayurvedic terms, we also translate them into three more terms, which I hope you all heard, Vata, Pitta and Kapha. So uh, it's not just by uh, when you say that I have this disease, that I will be able to tell you, okay, which uh, energy is out of balance or which element is out of balance. I need to really understand a lot of things before I actually come to the conclusion. This is called Ayurvedic consultation. So whenever you have any disease, you should uh, always consult with an Ayurvedic doctor. As I said, we have a facility that you can avail of. We have online consultations. You can also call. If you will go to the website, you will find all the details there. Uh, but I would just mention that most, uh, most of the skin problems where we have any kind of itching or burning, they're generally an aggravation or increase of fire element. So if you have a skin disease, generally, generally, this is general uh, you know, thing I'm talking about. So you should try to avoid foods which are heating in nature. As I mentioned, coffee, black tea, alcohol, smoking, chilies, uh, hot spices, uh, deep fried foods, oily things, should avoid them. Otherwise, you'll never uh, get benefit or you'll never get rid of this problem and take something opposite. Apply some coconut oil, drink coconut water, watermelon, drink some water. And of course, this is not enough sometimes if the disease is chronic, then you need specific medicines. In Ayurveda, we have specific medicines for different types of, uh, you know, energies or different types of, uh, you know, doshas, we call them vata, pitta, kapha. So there are uh, specific uh, combinations, specific medicines that we also can take internally to neutralize that particular underlying cause and get a permanent relief from the disease. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Chauhan. Uh, wonderful lecture. Somebody is asking about the website. So the website is www dot jiva j i v a jiva dot com yeah that's what the website is you can all see in the mm -hmm. chat box mm -hmm. um, so thank you thank you very much dr chauhan thank you everybody who joined us today this uh, recording will also be available later um, and you can see it again uh, to listen to the lecture again uh, and you. we hear we here at Veda Pulse team were happy to um, uh, organize this lecture for you and uh, we'll have a lot more in the future. So thank you everyone. Thank you very much and namaste, good night from India. <laughs>